Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users like yourself. Thank you for watching these update videos where I talk about some of the work that I've been up to recently. Uh, let's get into, first of all, some news regarding sponsorships. So as you probably are aware, my work here on Inkscape is paid for by you directly. Uh, users fund me through Patreon and through LibrePay. These are subscriptions which essentially help me make sure that I'm earning you know, a certain amount of money for the work that I put in. It means that I don't have to spend time doing non-Inkscape related tasks. There's been some movement to do with Patreon. And so what I've done is I've set up a Ko-fi to basically spread out uh, where I'm available. So if you are interested in sponsoring my work and you don't really like Patreon that much, you can join me on Ko-fi. Uh, you can either do one time or you can do monthly subscriptions. And a big thank you to all of the people that basically have the resources to commit to making Inkscape better. Uh, also a shout out to my uh, free software friends. I was at a free software event last night and they very sweetly gave me cash in my hand. Um, if you see me in the street and you want to sponsor me by literally putting cash in my hand, that is fine too. Uh, but for everybody else, Kofi, Patreon, LibrePay, and buy me a coffee. And thank you. So let's talk about the work that I've been up to uh, these past two weeks. Let's talk about the beta two. So we, you remember from the last video we released beta two, it had crashes in Windows. And I think it's worth saying that I pushed to have beta 3 released so that we could properly test the Windows stuff. Uh, I have it on good authority from Mark that the uh, beta 3 should be released as soon as possible. Um, the, the code is ready to be built. It just needs to be put out. Um, we may just do it for Win Windows because that's the platform that needs testing. Um, and a big thanks to everybody who was able to test uh, even with the crashes. Um, so let's talk about node deleting. So this is a fix that I put in for 1.4. Essentially, um, Mykov put in a feature which uh, adds a new algorithm for how Inkscape calculates what the curve should be when you delete nodes. So you delete a node in the middle of a path and it basically tries to make sure that the path continues on as it should. Um, the algorithm could sometimes be flaky, so he added a new one for different uh, style of um, guessing what the curve should be. Uh, it, it works really, really well, but unfortunately what happened is, is he removed the ability for us to make straight lines. Typically when you do control delete of nodes, instead of trying to guess the curve, it just makes a straight line. Um, that regressed. So one of the reasons was because the code didn't exist anymore, but another reason was because the modifier was being used. He was using control delete to do his new algorithm, and this was a conflict. So what I did is I moved his new functionality to shift delete, and I put the straight line back into control delete. Um, the new al al algorithm is pretty good. Um, I'm interested to see what people think of it when they test it. You'll be able to use all three mechanisms in 1.4. Uh, for master, I actually been, have, have been playing about with the delete node stuff a bit more, being a bit more adventurous. Uh, I wanted to make a new uh, type where if you pressed alt delete, it would um, cut the path at that point, right? The, the nodes would be basically removed entirely. Um, and then I wanted to add to cut when you do control X. Currently, if you do control X, it just replaces it with a straight line, like you just deleted the nodes. But actually what I wanted to do is I wanted the nodes to be removed and for the path to become incomplete. Um, and also a, a, a tweak to the algorithm. So the, um, a, the joining nodes would remain and so that you would be able to cut the lines and the nodes depending upon what you wanted to do. And that's important because sometimes you want to cut the lines between nodes and sometimes you want to cut the nodes themselves. And so hopefully we'll be able to do that. Okay, so let's continue on with uh, adding meters and feet. So uh, I've been doing some uh, planning work on the house, drawing the schematics of my house in Inkscape, uh, very useful if anybody uh, wants to be able to do that kind of thing. But unfortunately, Inkscape doesn't have meters and feet, uh, you know, larger units inside of the um, units file. And when I added them, it uh, kind of broke a few things. So I had to basically put in a bunch of fi fixes to make sure that Inkscape was doing the right thing when it comes to meters and feet. Those units will be added to 
1.5, uh, but I'll try and get it into 1.4.1. I think it will be useful and it's a relatively small fix. Um, so a regression in 1.4 is the removal of the um, native open and save dialogues. This is a really contentious issue because uh, the GTK open and save dialogues are not very good compared to the native dialogues. It doesn't matter what platform you're on, but it effectively affects win Windows. So I've got to put those back in. Um, you remember how I said that we don't really have any Windows developers, so we are struggling to fix Windows issues right now. So I've been spending the last few days actually building a cross compiler, basically trying to get this computer here to do uh, Windows building, and then I'll be able to run the Inkscape program through Wine. At least that's the theory. Uh, I've gotten quite far, but we'll see how that goes. The ultimate goal is to be able to fix this issue uh, to do with the uh, dialogues and also maybe some of the other Windows issues, depending upon if the testing burrs them out. Because, you know, you're running it through Wine. That's not a faithful test for Windows 10. Um, a small fix that I did to the, um, uh, the, the node selector. If you're using the, the transform ha handles in nodes, Sometimes if you selected a really small object, the uh, sum of the node uh, that handles would disappear, uh, even when you were zoomed in. And the reason for this was because it wasn't taking the zoom into account, so it wasn't calculating how visually far apart these nodes were before deciding to remove them or hide them. Uh, big thanks to Cheeseness, who is a game developer, who basically uh, I was watching on Twitch and he was doing some Inkscape work and this issue came up and I was able to fix it uh, basically the, there and then. So uh, thanks for that cheese. And uh, let's talk about the Shape Builder. So in the Shape Builder, it was um, keeping objects around when you um, would do some shape build building. And the reason for that was because it was not initializing the um, Shape Builder preferences when you first load Inkscape. And um, once those preferences were fixed correctly, uh, the Shape Builder remembered the settings as they were when you last closed Inkscape, and a lot of the, the all of those issues that I was having went away. So uh, yep, yeah, that's fixed. That's in 1.4 as well, and that's about it for what I've been up to. Um, I will talk about the um, color stuff that I've been doing in Python. Uh, and next week, I'm tentatively going to call the video. Uh, so good we coded it twice and uh, yeah, we'll get into why uh, Inkscape's extension system and Inkscape's code looks like we're programming everything twice um, and why we do that. Um, but let's talk about some of the things very quickly that other people have been up to. Uh, Mykov is continuing his work doing UX, some really interesting UX experiments with object properties. He wants to basically expand the object properties dialogue with a whole bunch of new editing stuff making that dialogue look a lot more like um, what you would see in Illustrator. I'm personally not convinced of the design aesthetic. I think it's confusing and has too many things on the same dialogue, but it's not going to replace any of the other dialogues, so it's not like it gets in the way. And it will be interesting to actually run a user experience test on and see what users actually think of it, both users that are used to Illustrator and those that are not. Uh, I want to give a sh shout out to the Google Summer Code student who is doing the Affinity Designer um, work. Uh, he's put in a whole bunch of other improvements for blurring and, and blend modes and all sorts of other stuff. Awesome work to see. Um, a shout out to PBS who has continued to do like minor fi fixes and a bunch of other stuff. And to Rene who has been looking after the Mac OS stuff and trying to make sure that we can continue to do the um, CI Builder and make sure that releases are ready at the right time. Um, okay, so that's that's everything for, for this week. Uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you um, subscribe so you can watch that color video next week because it's going to be interesting, especially for those who are interested in Python or those who are interested in running extensions uh, without, without Inkscape. Uh, it's going to be interesting. And um, yeah, I will see you next time.